What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. I'm Mark. I'm Rob. I'm Danny. I'm Josh. And gentlemen, first on the agenda, shots. I, I admire the commitment, guys, because I'm drinking coffee right now. It is way too early for that shit for me. <laughs> you, guys, you guys actually slam shots. Uh, and he's got the coffee. There we go. <laughs> Irish coffee. Little go. Irish coffee. That's what's up. Danny, I how we doing, buddy? I'm good, man. <laughs> good. Just, good. uh, we kind of got, I think, I feel like we got through, uh, Hell Week. You know, we got all of the, uh, artwork in and all of the music in for the album release so that's all squared away and done now and like i feel like we're beyond this massive hurdle you know yeah. so it's kind of like ah oh, yeah nice for sure so that's it's a little a little bit of the <laughs> a little bit of the stress off the shoulders right there yeah you know, it's all it's all lined up and it's all ready and set and you know just waiting on a date and when it does it'll it's all gonna happen so but That's you're married. Because so. <laughs> you're, you're waiting on a date. <laughs> uh, you can still date your wife. Uh, or husband. <laughs> What's the fun in that? Uh, <laughs> They'll probably bring your kids. And it's just like, uh, this makes it really awkward. And ruin everything. Right? Why do I want to date them? like... <laughs> Be like, sorry, I don't date married women. I'm your wife. No exceptions. <laughs> no exceptions. <laughs> we're, all trouble. Trouble. we're all in trouble now. That's a good oh, one. Shit. Uh, Rob, how you doing out there in Texas, buddy? Uh, good, good. I uh, had a little scare yesterday. Uh-oh. Um, I got woken up by uh, tornado air sirens. Oh, damn. That's got honestly. That's got to be terrifying to hear. What happened? Did you fart? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I think they were just testing the system. Okay. Uh, okay. So, they're just playing home. They're just playing home sweet hell in the background. That's all it was. Well, it's pretty much went. like they're. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're just gonna make sure this works because we know shit's popping off right now, and with the storm and the hurricane and all that. So we got to make sure our shit's working. Rob, yeah. are you asleep? Yeah, knocked out. Okay. <laughs> bro that oh. must have scared the shit out of you dude if you were asleep that would have scared the shit out of me i would have been like what the fuck <laughs> well then you'd like run outside and it's like clear blue skies sunny and everyone's in the pool and you're like i wish i would have put on pants <laughs> just standing out there <laughs> whoops <laughs> okay question for you then since you're, I don't want to say fairly new to Texas, but coming from California to Texas, were you one of the few people who ran out like, what the fuck's going on? And everybody else, like you said, was just in the pool. Did they turn and look at you like fucking California? Um, yeah, considering I was dressed like a poo bear. Out on the lawn, <laughs> it, it made it really awkward. <laughs> like you're going to go through a tornado with no pants on? Oh shit! He's just Rudy the Pooh in it outside. <laughs> I have not heard it put up as Winnie the Pooh. I've heard of I was Donald Duck in it, but Winnie the Pooh. Okay. <laughs> it would either one works. Either one. Josh, Pants how you doing, optional. buddy? You know what I'm saying. Pants well, optional. Other than that visual I was just given by Rob, uh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why the cops got called to your apartment last night? Did somebody call because you were out there winning the police? We have reports of a human helicopter out here. <laughs> <laughs> a human helicopter. Oh, oh fuck. man. Woo! Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, I just want to say that we had a rehearsal last night that was fucking fantastic, and I can't wait to play these shows coming up that we have coming up. We have one coming up Halloween night at the district in Redlands and the second one on November 2nd at Goodfellas in Rancho Cucamonga. And both of these shows, uh, I highly recommend not to miss either one of these because it's going to be fucking awesome. I can't wait. Um, <clears throat> you guys really quick before we start kicking off into everything else, uh, I was on TikTok live the other night and I had a question from somebody 
And I thought it'd be good to get on the podcast here. So uh, from between tomorrow at, on TikTok, he wanted to know what band would you like to be discovered by? And uh, <clears throat> I took that as who would you want to like, like, like you said, discover you, possibly pick you up on their label or whatever it is, maybe play, play shows with them. Rob, he did it. He did it. <laughs> bad boy records bad boy records, bad boy records right? hey man okay i'm sure their uh... name is now slippery <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, final answer. um i think i think mine's an obvious one Nine i already seven. know so I there, already you go. there you go um, yeah. i i would say as a good runner up and I don't know if it's exactly genre based or if it's like potential what they could do. Uh, Ozzy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah. What about have you, Dick? Potential of uh, Ozfest reunion or coming back <clears throat> and, and you get pushed by Ozzy. It's like the fucking god of metal, you know? <clears throat> yeah, that's a hell of a stamp of approval right there. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Danny? Oh, man, I, there's a few. Like, I would agree with, with Rob. Nine Inch Nails would be a, a good one. Having Trent Reznor be a guy that's kind of bringing you up would be amazing. Um, I mean, bands like Slipknot, Corn would be awesome, you know? Um, Josh? <clears throat> well, that's a tough one. Um, other than agreeing with Rob, um, except for of late, I probably would have went with Dave Grohl, except for the little mistake we had right now, just because like up until that little shit, like dude was an all around great human being, total rock star, did a lot of charity work. So not only just as the music wise, but being able to be associated with that dude and the stuff that comes around with him. And then, oh, we're touring with the Foo Fighters. Like, I know that's not really our style of music. But I think he yeah. could open up a lot of doors for us. And it would also not only benefit just one person in the band, but all of us because of drumming and guitar work and singing. Like, there'd be a lot of opportunities that could benefit the whole entire band, not just one person. Maybe yeah. we could get Dave Girl to just join us, you know? There you go. <laughs> I don't want to end up pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Wait, you're going to go for P. Diddy, too, or what? Uh, I, I don't think it works like that. <laughs> what well, about you, Mark? I, I got I, I to kind of agree with you guys on the Trent Reznor one, just because of everything that that guy does is fucking gold. So, But, like, um, I, you know, Danny, you mentioned Slipknot, but I would say Corey Taylor in particular. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, I feel like if we could get into a studio with that guy – and just pick his brain for a day. You know what I mean? That would be that would be amazing. <clears throat> Have him, hey, you guys open up for us or something like that. I think we'd fit the bill. So yes, yeah, uh, not open up for us. I like that. Yeah, that's what's up, dude. That's what I mean. <laughs> Ain't yeah, no one gonna be there for us. <laughs> Court, Court, Court is like, hey guys, guess what? We're opening for you. Cool, man. <laughs> Yeah, they play at eleven. Uh, we play at two thirty in the morning. But you guys hey, did we... Slipknot live, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Danny's you know probably seen them more than any of us. For them to set up for the show. Yeah, so I said we play at like two in the morning. They play at eleven. We play at two. Hear me out. Just <laughs> nine instruments, right? Nine instruments. And then you got to sound check each one of those instruments, and you do all the pre sound checks, and you get everyone. But like when they were like the opening band, or or you like in the opening slots of the show, dude, well, yeah, those shows. You show up to a venue and you go, oh, we have like basically three drum kits, you know, and then we've got a sample guy, and this dude. Like it's so many more <clears throat> inputs than your average band. So yeah, you would have trouble as an opening band going. I mean, what? being a band and saying, hey, we've got a couple channels of, like, tracks, and maybe we've got, like, uh, an in-ear send we need sometimes feels like you're you're asking for a stretch, you know? Mm -hmm. But to say we've got 
samples, this, that, a DJ, other drum stuff. Yeah. Dude, imagine imagine rolling up and you're just getting started at Slipknot and you're an opening band and they're like, okay, what do you guys have to sound check? And the guy points to like a keg and a baseball bat. He's like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta sound check that. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> throw a mic, throw a mic on it. Pick the best right. mic you can for that. Throw it on and dial it in. You know. Yeah. But I, I think the thing that was was when they were opening up, like their little sound check before the band came out and everything, was like an hour and a half. Like Damn. it was ridiculous. Like you're just like, okay, I get. There's nine members. You got to check each mic and make sure it's all dialed in. But it was like. Hey, we're gonna start a show. Cool. Here's this band. Here's this band. Okay, Slipknot's coming up. <laughs> just let the DJ run for whatever, and you're just like, "Are you guys gonna start already? Come on, let's do it!" And then it just happens, and you're like, "Cool, the mood's set. I don't care who's playing the rest of the night." And no more hey, Rob, headlining. You know what they didn't have to sound check? Uh, guitar <laughs> solos. They didn't have to check guitar solos. Like that. <laughs> Good segue. Uh, That's they, a, they didn't That's have a great guitar segue. solos because uh, Mick in an interview was talking about how for their first album, a lot of the solos were removed by, uh, and I guess it was a decision by Ross Robinson and Joey Jordison. And in, in his words, he quoted them as saying, them, calling them stupid. And then he's like, so I sat in my bedroom for years learning how to play guitar and all this stuff. And then you tell me that this is stupid, you know? So it's just after all these years, he brings that up after tw like 25 years, you know? And it's, um, yeah, you know, dude, you know, you know, he'd been wanting to get that off his chest, dude. <laughs> he was like, by the way, fuck you guys. <laughs> right? 25 it's years me, later. The first album wouldn't have sound like that. Uh, uh, right? Danny. And it's like. Well, uh, hey, I hate to break it to you. Your first album, multiple platinum. Like, you guys are where you're at now because of that first album. Well, I would have put more solos over it. Of course you would, guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> I would have put more of me in it. Oh, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> what are you going to say, Josh? <laughs> um, the album, was it the self-titled album or was it Nate, Feed, Kill, Repeat? It, I think it was the self-titled. Okay. Yeah. I believe is what he said in the interview. Okay. I guess from what what they what he was saying in the interview was that the other two guys were saying that like they just felt like guitar solos and metal songs was just there because it was the blueprint for metal songs. It was like it didn't matter what the song was. Here and here is where you have the guitar solos in every one of the metal songs. And so they, they wanted to get away from that. And they, they kind of felt like it was a little hokey, I guess. So they were like, we're not just going to put guitar solos in there because that's the blueprint for, for metal songs. So that's why they pulled them. A, a <clears> little <throat> hokey. They have a sampler. I was going to say, instead of a solo, DJ. they put samples of DJs to fill the solos. Hey man, I'm just, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know what was said. I, mean, I didn't say it made sense. <laughs> Oh, huh. man. It, it, oh. But hear me out, though. Like, it worked. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I, I mean, if 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 the first album had a bunch of guitar solos over it, I mean, metal's metal. They would have still ate it up either way. But do you think that it needed solos? Like, I thought the first album is pretty much untouchable. For yeah, Slipknot. but apparently, apparently Mick wanted some solos in there. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it didn't matter because they ended up changing their first album anyways. Yeah. Like, it, you had Purity and then, oh, now it's me inside. Sorry. What? What happened there? Uh, yeah. No, you didn't miss anything. No, I did because you completely switched out songs yeah. and changed up your whole album. And hey, 20 year, 25 year anniversary of it. And it's just like, okay, are you going to play that song that you removed within the first two years of that album dropping or no? <laughs> what song? <laughs> You're like, Fuck. so let me ask you guys, let me ask you guys a question. Um, as far as guitar solo heavy bands, that's, I mean, it's like, we don't really do that. I think honestly, I think the only song that we have that has any solo in it would be same, right? Is it same? Yeah. Much, yeah. Uh, fine, I'll do it myself. 
Okay. I mean, uh, we we kind of had a Slipknot incident with that song, but, you know. Elaborate, sir. There was a solo <laughs> taken out of Fine, I'll Do It Myself. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I was like, dude, there's no solo in that song. I was like, what are you I talking know, about? <laughs> I don't think you heard it. Okay. Uh, I don't so, think I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Did I not yeah, did I not did. catch that on the on the cutting room floor? I don't remember that. No, it it oh oh you don't remember this? We I, should dude. save this for the Patreon, but uh, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. There there was a solo in there and I'll give you a hint. It wasn't guitar, wasn't drums, it definitely wasn't vocals. And it, it sounded like an angry And it was breaker. not, and it was not the bass player. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the fucking, the computer printer thing? The computer like, printer. <laughs> hey, it's still in the song, dude. It's just not as, it's just not as dominant as it was in the mix when it's we first did no, it. There, there's it's still there. Hints, it's there. There's hints of it. Yeah. Like the, the solo track that we had that was like, this is fucking awesome. It was like, yeah, no, it isn't Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it, So, yeah. So the final yeah. mix, I, I kind of had a Mick, Mick experience myself. Like, where'd the fuck that go? Where, <laughs> what happened to this? Like, this is holding the energy. Not anymore, it ain't. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. fuck, hey. all right. If you think it works, you know. Oh, um, that's funny. But yeah, the, the solo. Do do we think it makes or breaks a song? No, but I think you got to think of the style of band too. Like, if you see when I think band, when I when I think solo heavy bands, I think bands like Avenged Sevenfold. You, you know what I mean? Uh, not really yeah. my 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 cup of tea because of all the guitar solos. Not really a big fan of it. <clears throat> Well, you're, it, and it's also a live band. If it was five dudes just singing, you'd be all fucking about it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang, um, <laughs> bang, bang. Hey, bang. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang. But, you, like Pantera. Pantera is a band where you you got to let some of that guitar fly because of the style that that it brings that it introduces more of the <laughs> the jam element you know what i'm saying yeah. where yeah. if it's just like hey we're all going to share a spotlight like here's the drummer here's the bass player here's you know like bands used to do back in the day uh iron butterfly and i got a Vita, 17 <clears> minute <throat> song and each member of the band jams out and has their own little moment and you're just like this is fucking awesome. And you're like, yeah, but it's 17 minutes. And it's like, yeah, but that's when the drugs kick in, you know? Like, I'm so <laughs> but that's like when you used to have to like listen to music, like you would sit there and you would put on an album and you couldn't fucking go anywhere. Like you were tied to the record at the time or the tape. And you had a chair. To <laughs> you were tied to, to a chair. <laughs> Showing fucking age, yeah. Just oh, we had to sit there and we couldn't take our music anywhere. But you listen to the album in its entirety, as opposed to hey, we're gonna take this one song. Cool, I want to solo all over it because if that's the one song we're gonna push, I want them to hear me. And you're like, fuck you, we're a <clears> band. <throat> that's where a lot of bands start. Hey, I want the spotlight. I want the spotlight. Uh, yeah. So it's when you find that that connection to where it's like, oh, hey, I'll share it with you. You have your moment here and this song and that. And then we groove and we just we just feel it. Have fun with it. And, the, yeah. and then you start to see that camaraderie come out and people love the the interactions. With and the then if you don't like it, itself. and then if you don't like it, you just fucking delete it. <laughs> <laughs> or that. There's that. But to... Uh, to... To add to what you just said, Rob, about the I, I want the spotlight mentality of, of bands, I tend to I feel like that's that tends to be more younger bands. You know what I mean? People that are, you know, just getting started out or like are in their like younger 20s that 
they're just full of fucking piss and vinegar and want to show the world every single guitar solo they have. Uh, but that's why I love what we do now. Like, granted, you know, we're all older dudes, but we've gone through Please those experiences. Yourself, moron. <laughs> we've gone through those experiences. <laughs> we've gone through, we've gone through, you know, the egos and the, well, I want to do this and I should do that or whatever. And it's more so what benefits the band? What benefits the song? What needs to be here? Do I need to be here less? Do you need to be here more? It's not just, well, what about me? Well, it's not, well, I'm only in the song for 32 seconds. Who the fuck cares? If that's what it needs to be, that's what it is. You mm-hmm. know, and, and, I, and I love that about us, about what we do here in this band. <clears throat> uh, <sighs> but it's not, always, it's not always about showcasing the instrument. Yeah, um, you're right. Apparently, you could be in your teens and 20s, be full of piss and vinegar, and not even play an instrument and still demand a spotlight. Um, this is, I'm trying to do a segue. Here, bear with me. Okay, so, here we go. There's a festival <laughs> that announced Kyle Rittenhouse as a uh, guest of a festival. And. <clears throat> Many bands were just like, what the fuck? We, we, we're not trying to politicize our band. We're not trying to be all about this message that you want to portray now all of a sudden. So they just said, eh, we're not going to do your festival. Uh, the headliner backed out and several other acts were just like, no, we don't, we don't support this decision and backed out. And the replacement they got. Five Finger Death Punch and Trapped, I'm guessing. <laughs> Close. <laughs> they got a Slipknot cover band. Oh, shit. Now, now, hear me out. I guess it's just showing my age, but I thought Slipknot... 23. On the dot. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be 24 here in a couple days. Uh... <laughs> But there, I always thought that there's certain bands you just don't cover, right? You yeah. just don't don't touch their songs. You're not going to do it any justice. You're not going to come close to it. No, oh, I'm going to practice every night. And cool. So you become an identical sound of this band. What? Why do I want to see the knockoff when I can see the real thing? It it. I get it. Some bands where you're going like, oh, I want to see a Led Zeppelin cover band. <clears throat> Because Led Zeppelin's half dead, um, you know you the the Doors, hey, they're half dead. Leonard Skinner, half dead. So I get I get the cover band. If you still want to see said acts live or hear it live, you go see a cover band. But when the band is still active. And doing shows and, and putting out material and still like, hey, we're still growing. It's like, yeah, we're going to grow like you, too. And it's like, they're still playing shows. Like, I can still go see them play at the Palladium or go see them play at, you know, this place or that place. And, and you're just like, why would I go see this cover band? Oh, because they play every weekend. <laughs> like... I didn't get, but they they ended up replacing the headliner with a Slipknot cover band, cover band for a festival. Just the only cover band I could think that could actually pull that off would be me first and the Gimme Gimmies, but they've made a whole <laughs> career yeah. out of doing covers in punk rock <laughs> style. So you yeah. actually pay to go here said specific uh richard cheese and lounge against the machine you know it's that style you pay to go hear it done and and like okay i get it then you do those covers but to do them identical and like hey we're gonna try to sound and be like this bit (sighs) sorry i'm talking this you guys take this and then i'm gonna kind of sidestep no you're good i was just gonna ask you you do you want to send a clarification though, just in case, because there is a, like a fine line between people who want to be a cover copy of a band, and then there's the bands like 
we're going to be playing with on Halloween that is a tribute that covers band songs, but they do it their own way. And I don't want to call them a parody. No, 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 no. But like you said, a tribute. Um, so example, me first in the Gimme Gimme's, I would say do tributes to the original song, <clears throat> but do them in a punk rock style. We're like, yeah. this is our this is our tribute to acknowledge that this was a good song or that's a good song. 100%. But if you go up and do the same fucking thing that they do, they're like, hey, we're a cover band. You're just you're, you're you're just playing their sound with their you try to match their look, their vibe, so it feels like you're watching that band. Yeah. Without actually putting their style into it, like a tribute band would. Mm-hmm. Well, and then also, hear me out, they, this festival got Kyle Rittenhouse to speak at it or something, and it's kind of like, does the guy play an instrument? Like, what? what is this, you know? And yeah, why, like, is he, why is he there? Yeah, right. <laughs> why is he there? Well, because it's, you know, it's some kind of Second Amendment thing, you know? And it's like, I don't I don't know, man, if Kyle Rittenhouse is your, like, hero because, you know, he defended himself, right? Like, you know, in a court of law, he defended himself. This dude went there with a gun, you know? Yeah, I mean, he shouldn't, even, he shouldn't even have been in the fucking equation, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, and to, exactly. Like, to, to have him as a speaker, I, I believe the... The festival's like Shell Shock, right? Is the festival. And I believe that they donate money to like wounded first responders and well, you know, it, stuff yeah, like it that. Well, yeah, it was a festival for so they, they, Yeah, and they, they do they do some, some cool work in that area. But to bring that guy in, I mean, they could have brought any like solid like military figure that's, that's good in to be a, you know, a good speaker. And they brought that dude in, and then, then they made a statement afterwards. Have you have you heard their statement? That they no, made? what's that? So they basically said like, "There's this is a war on ideals, basically, and they're not going to be detoured by like the uh, the left mob." You know what I'm saying? And it's like, "Oh, okay, so now you're taking and saying that we're going to help and support first responders, but now you're taking a political stance in that as well." So my question yeah. here is, and this is my first thing I thought of when I when I heard that, like, this festival is, I think by taking that stance and that statement, now you politicized it, right? Mm-hmm. So are we going to have to have metal shows that are like, hey, we've got, like you said, Trapped and uh, what's the other one you mentioned? <laughs> Five Finger Five Finger, five finger, five finger Fruit Punch, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> um, you know, we're gonna have like a conservative metal show, and then we're gonna have a not conservative metal show for everybody else. Like, I, I mean, what are you doing here? I mean, because if you do that, bands are dropping off. I'm pretty sure your tick, you're gonna see a hit in the ticket sales. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just don't understand where you. I mean, regardless to what your feelings are in something, I don't understand how this is a good business decision on a tourer's part. You know, because me yeah. personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't sign us up to play a show at that festival. Would I sign up to do a show to help vets and first responders with PTSD and stuff like that? Fucking absolutely. Absolutely. But not, yeah. not for a group of people that are going to put some dude up like that and make him a representative of your, you know, company, your thing you're doing here. Well, it's yeah. like stupid, stupid ass move on their part. You know? It's like mm-hmm. you said, though, Danny, he doesn't even play an instrument. So what really is the point of the having only, him The there? only thing I see that dude playing is the smallest violin in the world. That's all. <laughs> well, pl- quick question. So if they ended up getting a, uh, a cover band to headline this thing, what fucking band stood on the bill? Do you know? Um, that, that, that they didn't have a bigger name than a cover band to fucking headline this thing. No, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, there were still names on this bill that I don't know if they've dropped off since said article was, has been posted or who's still on the bill or if the event's even still going at this point. Uh, uh, but there were still names of bands still on the event, and you're like, okay, so are they supposedly still in favor of this, or are they just 
like, oh, show's a show, we need money, and it's going to help with that part of the tour. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Um, playing a show is an awesome feeling. Playing a festival, you know, is an even bigger, you know, chance to reach a bigger crowd, so it, it hits a little different than, hey, we're going to play this bar or well, this coffee the, shop. The networking between other bands and stuff that goes on. Yeah, so you, yeah. you see it as like a big opportunity to play with these other bands. Yeah. And then we're going to shit right in the middle of it and see who sticks around. And you're like, Stupid what? move, man. Stupid. Well, I mean, yeah. it's it's just like... <sighs> Dude, there's plenty of fucking heroes you could have put up there, man. Plenty of heroes. You know? Yeah. Like, I would have put up the mom who raced into Uvalde to go get her children while the cops yeah. were standing around doing nothing. There's, like, there's yeah. gotta be, the there, there's gotta be like a military dude or firefighter, police officer that saved people's lives and shit out there somewhere, you know? Yeah. That we could put up instead of Kyle Rittenhouse, you know? Fuck yeah. out of here. I, I would have probably put up Steve Buscemi before I put up Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> like, First responder, dude. He stopped acting to go help with 9-11. 9-11, yeah. And so it's just like, fuck yeah. Like, put put people with valor and people who actually have the merit to say, hey, these are these are the reasons why we do said shit. Instead of, hey, this guy got a fucking spotlight for being an a-hole. Let's put him in the spotlight. Like, no. Like, you're <laughs> trying to showcase your best. And so I feel like one side's just like, well, this guy just really pisses them off, so we're going to show him. And it's just like... <clears throat> dude, yeah, honestly, I feel like that's... Potentially the... shitting in an argument. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So not to do a drastic change of a subject here, Rob, but before <laughs> we end this podcast, you did say that you finally saw Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I wanted to talk a little bit about that real quick. I not only just saw it, I bought it. Oh, okay. It is now available <laughs> to stream on um, Amazon Prime. And I went to the we, theater and saw it yesterday. I, it, I mean, it's still in theaters. Um, <clears throat> I liked it. I liked it. it. It hit home. It filled, you know, like, okay. I, I get it. The running time is what, like a little over 90 minutes? Something right. like that, yeah. And so, yeah, I feel like they crammed too much. Mm. There's There was a lot in there. Um, so my you, only Rob, problem... You, Go ahead. Did you pick up on the vibe that I was talking about where I, I told you it almost seemed like it wasn't just the first movie that there was like an inspiration in this. It seemed like some of the, like the animated cartoon was in it too. Did you pick up on any of that? Uh, I, like you I saw tried the to whole feel that vibe. Soul Train scene, right? You saw all mm -hmm. that, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought that was very like the animated cartoon and not like the original Beetlejuice, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I get I get what you're saying where it felt a little more cartoony. Right. Mm. I think I I I have no clue where that came from. I thought it was like Willy Wonka leftover. You know? Hey, let's have the <clears throat> you know, Oompa Loompa's dance. But now let's make them black <laughs> and, and you're like, wait, what what what's going on? <laughs> What? It was like, you know, the soul trade. It's just like, this is where all the dead black people go. And I'm like, oh, wait. Oh. It was like, uh, what's going on here with this part? Okay, so you're the only one that, so I'm not the only one that felt like this. Like, I was like, what is going on? Like, is this the That's only scene saying. that black that black people are in is the soul trade spot? Like, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, it was I mean, so weird. Like, no, like the cops, you know, a couple of the cops were black and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, though, in general, but, for them to be like, hey, the Soul Train, this is how a bunch of black people dancing right here. <laughs> when it was like Dom Cornelius is hosting the Soul Train, I'm like, okay, that's a little, like, you didn't have celebrity death references in the first one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, yeah, it was a little uh, different, you know? 
So okay. you want to talk a little bit about how about how they and how they handled uh, one of the specific actors that was in the first one? Oh, we can. Um, and and <laughs> if you spoiler alert, I guess I think it's way too fucking late for this. Yeah, bro, go uh, watch the movie. Fuck. <laughs> Okay, so Sorry. we all know, we've talked about it on previous episodes, that the original actor for Charles uh, Dietz, who uh, was portrayed by Jeffrey Jones, who in real life ended up kind of being a creep. Uh, <clears throat> so how do they move forward with this character? So they kill him off, because it's a movie about death and dealing with death in the afterlife, so they could play that off. Um, the way they did it, I think was tasteful because they didn't have to use the actor because everyone knows you're going to see a Tim Burton film. So if you get Tim Burton esque elements um, that aren't consistent, you know, with, with the rest of the film, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like you could be watching, um, one of the original Batman movies and all of a sudden it could jump to Nightmare Before Christmas and you wouldn't even think twice because it's Tim Burton you know like oh okay so it kind yeah. of does that element and blends the art mediums you know like the special yeah, there was effects like, a, like almost like a 3D animated like claymation looking scene like the old yeah. school way <clears throat> Tim Burton used to do his movies right yeah Josh like so they just they're movies. they're 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 talking about his death in the movie, and they show this flashback, and it's all like an animated claymation thing, is what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, like he crashes in a plane, and then he lands in the ocean. Doesn't he died die in a from plane that. Crash? No, he no. didn't die from that. He was in the so he drowned. No, he didn't drown. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah. but but the way they did it, and and the way they moved forward with it, I thought was, eh, okay. I, I get it. I, I felt like there were too many stories going on at the same time. Okay. To yes. Where, I... To where it just was like, okay, focus on this, that, 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 and wrap it up. And you're I, like, wanted more, uh, I wanted more baby juice, you know? <laughs> so do you think it should have been like a two-hour movie then? Like they needed another 30 <laughs> minutes or so? Uh, hear me out. I, I think they should have made a part two or three, a three, and okay. and called it Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, well, and, for for from what I hear, that is the plan. That it, yeah, this one did but, so well, they're going to do a third one. So, but I think that they cram too much into it in trying to get the same story storyline mm -hmm. aspect from the first one. Oh, we got the first one out in this time. Well, yeah, because your storylines interact. This one, I felt like, had too many parts, like, um, uh, drawing a blank on her fucking name, but the wife. Yes, I thought that that wasn't really needed at all in, this, in the movie. I was like, I well, mean, there's no I, through plot I think, line I with think that. The only, the only thing I think it did was kind of create, like, urgency because she was coming. You know, like yeah. you knew that she was going to get there and eventually that was going to happen. But, but they like, made her seem like this big threat and then she never did anything. Right. <laughs> I was like, hey, okay. Yeah. Here's how we take them out. Go back she and sucked the, the soul movie. out of a few people. Well, she did kill Bob. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, that spoiler wasn't needed. <laughs> that hey, wasn't I can, I can remove this if you want me to. It was like one of the saddest parts of the movie. And oh. you're just like, don't worry. Well, like you I'll, said, go watch it. You should have watched it. I'll watch it. it. I'll watch it. <laughs> I'm so bad. I haven't even watched Deadpool three yet. Oh man, I think it's uh coming out on Disney Plus. Or I think it's either already out or it's coming out soon. Yeah, I, I just haven't had time. Too. Yeah, I can yeah. stream them both. I just haven't had time. So I promise I'll watch them before next week and I'll let you guys know. But have you fucking watched Event Horizon yet, bro? No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Yeah, you're on my I'll ass. Get it. Like, I'll, I'll get to it. 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 I'm telling you this. You have a deadline, though. You uh, you okay. have to watch it before I get before, there. 
before you get here. Okay. Before I get there. What's because... that like a week and a half? When, when, when you what, what day again? The twenty third. The twenty third. Yeah. Twenty third. Oh, so you'll be here on on Audrey's birthday on my daughter's birthday. That's my daughter's birthday. So <laughs> that's when I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> that's why i've been going to the gym dude and preparing myself for the punch here we go <laughs> i'm just gonna take it yeah all righty guys we're about 40 minutes deep into this thing right here any last thoughts before we wrap this thing up i do um i just want to say uh spooky season we're we're coming to halloween oh, spooky dookies honey. Hey. And Halloween's coming up. And speaking of spooky dookies, there's a certain <laughs> candy, folks, that kind of looks Fuck. like dookie. And you don't want to give your kids dookie for Halloween. So I was really hoping kids, you weren't going to remember this. Rolls. I want you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we got a little more about Tootsie Rolls. Over the right. more to the middle. A little more um, to the right. Mark has You're vowed. Left. You're left. That every single Tootsie Roll that is donated or sent to this address, he will eat on the podcast. But they have to be sent in before November 2nd. So any hey. Tootsie Rolls that you don't want or that you have or you want to see Mark eat, please send them to this address and he will eat every single one of them on the podcast. I am so confident that nobody will do this, that you can't really see what you're holding up there. The link is in the bio, guys. There is – there. Is, <laughs> the link is in our bio on Instagram and TikTok for our P.O. box. I dare you to send me some Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> you're throwing down the gauntlet to people? Ooh, man. You think no one's going to do this? I already told Just you they the can't be from you guys. They can't be from you guys. <laughs> Wait, uh, wait until, wait until I make the video and I plead the case to everybody and oh, I show fuck. them the clip from last year and then we get them invested. They're going to be sick and watch. You're in for and it, bro. We have a little plan. Them, and then you're going to take a spooky dookie. <laughs> if I, I eat all those tootsie rolls, all together, if I eat all those tootsie rolls, I probably won't shit for a year. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. This has been the last days of Warcast. Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure that you're liking and you're sharing and you're telling your friends. We have a new single coming out in uh, tomorrow, actually, the day that this drops. Tomorrow, tonight. new single. Save yourself tonight, uh, October 11th, November 5th. Album drops. Check that out. We'll be having a pre-save link for that soon as well. Uh, if you can make it out Halloween uh, at the district in Redlands or November 2nd at Ratchet Kokomogo, we'll see you guys there. Thanks so much. We're out.